Hello, teachers of English. I hope you're all fine. Here I am again, because today we are going to be seeing the phonemic chart part 3. Are you ready? So let's go. So, this is a revision from the two last sessions. We saw part 1, vowel sounds. So let's review the vowel sounds that we have here. E, E, O, U, E, 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 O, A, 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 O. All right. Dip, diphthongs. We have them there, okay. As we, I was waiting for the green square. So, diphthongs. Ear. A. Ua. Oi. O. Or in American English, O. Air. I. Ow. Good. If you have any questions concerning those uh, previous parts, you can go back to them and sort them out. And today we are going to finish with the sounds from the phonemic charts. So here we are consonant sounds. There are 22 consonant sounds in English and two semi-vowels, all right? So here they are, all these sounds here, and here, and here, and the two semi-vowels there. Okay, let's, let's go. But before that, you know, I'd like to ask you what's a consonant sound. It's the sound produced by a partial or complete obstruction of the airstream by a constriction of the speech organs. What's that? Okay, you're going to see it better as we go along. All right, but the important thing is there is a partial or a complete obstruction of the air, the airstream, all right? So, there are 24 consonant sounds in English, okay? And, oops, and they are divided into two different types according to the sounds they make or do not make. We can have voiced consonant sounds because they produce voice and voiceless consonant sounds. No voice. So, and uh, how can we check which one is voiced and which group is voiceless? Voiced consonant sounds they are made by a vibration of the vocal cords. Our vocal cords are here. So if they vibrate, you can put your hand here, your fingers, and try to say the word or the consonant um, M. The sound is M. Mm, there's a vibration here because it's voiced. Okay. All right. Now, voiceless consonant sounds, there's no vibration. So I'd like you to say, for example, uh, you know the word, the word she? Let's remove E and just say sh with your hands here. There's no vibration. 
Okay, M. Mm. Mm. All right, so voiced, vibration, voiceless, no vibration of the vocal cords. Both types use the breath, the lips, the teeth, and the upper palate. Okay, the palate inside your mouth the upper palate to further modify speech okay look to further modify speech okay so I'll go back there Good. now silent consonant sounds we are going to start uh, with the silent consonant sounds okay so here uh, when there is a group of two consonants uh, the the this group one of them is silent so here I'm talking about the B sound and every time I have the M the M and the B together the B doesn't have any sound for example the word climb so there is an M there is a B so the B is silent climb climb bomb bomb dumb dumb okay and even here the per the person climbs the mountain is the climber so we never say the b the b climber and the airplane which drops bombs is the bomber bomber and if the person is get, is getting even more dumb the person is getting dumber dumber so every time I have the two consonants, K and N, the K, the K sound, is silent. So, no, ni, no. No is a trademark, okay? Those things that you used to cook with, those flavors. So, no, ni, no, we have knife and many others that you you know and every time I have a B and a P and they are followed by a T it's silent example that word you have D E B T B T so the B is not pronounced that that the next one receive Receipt, the P is not pronounced. Okay? So, I brought this to you because uh, I've seen many people uh, visualizing the, those letters and trying to pronounce them. Okay? But they are silent. Alright. Now, I've also brought to you something that many people ask me again and again, is about, which is about the regular past simple sounds the ed so the rule is quite um it's it's quite organic all right because i'm going to explain it to you and you're going to see what i mean by organic so when you pronounce the simple the past simple the ed you have three different ways of pronouncing the ed we have the voiceless t sound. T. The name of the letter is T, but the sound it makes is T. Example. We have the, the verb park. Yeah? To park your car. Park. The last sound of the, the verb park is this one here in red. 
is voiceless because there is no vibration. Pa, k, k, k. So naturally, the past, the ed pronunciation of the past simple is pa, k, t. So that's organic. That's what I mean by organic, because the verb, the last sound of the verb, gives you the hint. Yeah, if the if the ed is going to be t or not. Park, parked. The next one. Stop, stop, stopped, stopped, stopped. The next one. Porch, porch. Voiceless. Shh. The sound is coming from here. Not from the vocal cords, so that's why it's voiceless. So, push, pushed, pushed. So, parked, stopped, pushed. The next group, that's the voiced. The voiced. D. D. Right? The name of the letter is D, but the sound it makes is D. D. So let's check. We have the verb rob, b, b is voiced, rob, robbed, 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 bd. Close, close, closed, closed, d. Climb, because it's m sound. Climbed, climbed. You, you can see that you never pronounce the e in, the, in those past tenses. And I brought to you the verb fry because it's a vowel sound. Fry, i is a dip, is a diphthong, so diphthong. Fried, fried. And when the verb finish in T and in D. What happens? So let's have a look at the verb um, visit. Visit. You could say, okay, it's a visit. So it should be visit. No, no. It's, it's difficult. It's or oh, it's strange. Uh, what about the, ver the verb need? Need. De. So it should go d need d, d. no 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 so we need to put an extra sound there look visit plus ed visited 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 i visited her yesterday need need plus ed needed it's, it's the did when you ask a question. Did, did he go, did, need, did. That's the way you pronounce it, okay? That I'm talking about pronunciation. Pronunciation. Visit, visited, need, needed. Okay? Good. Um, all right. Here we go. We're going to be talking about all, all those sounds. And consonant sounds are easier, in a way, because uh, uh, we have most of them in Portuguese, so for us it's fine. Yeah. But okay, let's go. We're going to start with... We're going to be uh, analyzing pairs, right? One is voiceless, and the other is voiced. So we have the... P. Repeat after me. And we have the voiced b, b. It's the same. P. Voiceless b, b. Voiced. Okay. So I have here examples. P. Play. Quite simple. And on in the end, map. Map. Good. 
Uh, one thing that happens with with the English language is the p sound is more aspirated. So um, I'm gonna say uh, the same word in English. I mean in Portuguese and then in English, uh, the same pronunciation, kind of. Uh, the word dad, father in Portuguese, dad, we say in Portuguese, pai, pai, look at the sheet of paper, pai. And in English, when you're gonna eat those uh, sweet pastry things, that you call them, P-I-E, pie, pie. So in Portuguese, the dad, and in English, the sweet. Pie, pie. So the p sound, there's this, uh, you know, stream of air. That's why when you, when you check uh, those uh, singers, um, studios, recording, they have those microphones and there is like, you know, this circle with a net. It's to prevent the microphone to to explode with the p, p sound. Okay, so p, voiceless and b, voiced. Baby, tube, b, tube. In American English, I think it's tube, tube. Okay, b. So that's simple, I think. The next one, we have these two sounds. Voiceless, t, voiced, d, t, d. Examples: tell, t, e, l, tell, rest, rest, day, kind, d, d, day, kind. These two, we have ch and j, ch, j, ch, j. Check, check, watch, watch. So this ch is that t and that symbol ch. And j, j is the voiced jog. Jog and edge, edge. Here we have k, g, come. It's the sound k at the beginning. Come, picnic, picnic, picnic. And g, get, dog, get, dog. Oh, the fricatives. Okay. Fun. Fun. Death. Death. Very. Very. Active. Active, active, good. These two here, for some people, they're quite scary. Oh my God. The, f the first one, for me, it represents a mouth, an open mouth. And here, this line is the tongue. And the other one is the same sound, but it's voiced. Vocal cord vibration. So the two of them. The tongue has got to be between your teeth. Okay? So we have thick, thick breath, 
breath. Um, there is a radio station here, and uh, it's a Brazilian radio station, and there is that song, Take My Breath Away, ding, ding, ding. and every time they are going to say the title, the guy can't pronounce it very properly, he says, Take My Bread Away. <laughs> so I always picture bread going away, like, mm. now it's breath. And the voiced one, th that, th that, th that, breathe, breathe. Okay, so it's nice here because we have the noun, breath, and the verb, breathe, breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, good. Oh, here we have and Oops, sorry. So we have sit, sit, and we have kiss. Kiss. Um, for example, the word stop. This sound is quite strong, right? Stop. There is no e, e in the beginning. It's not is e stop. It's stop. Stay. And the z, zoo, zoo. Quiz, quiz, and many words in English when they finish in uh, with a voiced sound. I'm talking about nouns. The plural is with the z sound. So, for example, let's have a look at the word toy, toys, uh, doll, dolls. Now let's have a look at the word um, mop for you to clean the kitchen floor. Mop, mops. And it's this one here because the p is voiceless. So mops. Yeah? But if, I'm, if I say um, like dog, the animal, d o g. G is voiced, so dogs, 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 dogs. Okay. Oh, here we have sh from she, sh, and zh, zh. So we have she, cash. There are many more, right? And the other one. Vision, vision. Remember that vision. We have the schwa there. Vision, 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 vision. And the color beige, beige. Okay, these two are quite simple. The problem is in Portuguese when. In English, when uh, the word ends with an m sound, it's quite difficult for students to pronounce because we don't have the equivalent in Portuguese. So first they they refer to the mother tongue for you know for some support, and then they try and uh, they try to to make that sound in the English language, and sometimes it's more challenging because they don't have this background sound in their uh, in their um, sound matrix. Okay. M my my name name and n n no 
or no, n, sun, sun. Good. Okay, this one here, I've isolated it, isolated it, because uh, it could be a challenge. This sound is the in Portuguese, it would be the equivalent to the to the I to the N H. So, for example, uh, galinha, galinha, galinha. You don't say the R in the word galinha in Portuguese. Galinha. Remove the R. Galinha. It's this sound, yeah. So we have king, not king. There are some accents in English that the the G, the G, could be pronounced, yeah, but mostly it's not. So it's king, long, long, tongue, tongue, and we have here sing. Sing. In American English, would be singer, singer, acting, acting, and the last one is super challenging because we have both. We have two. Yeah, yeah. Singing, singing. I'm singing in the rain. Singing, singing. Let's practice those sounds. Okay. That sound, oh, it's at the back of the, the, the mouth. So, help, help, hotel, hotel. And here we can see the the H, but we don't pronounce it. Our honest. Okay, so the problem is um, in Brazil, most people uh, use the H sound for our R for the beginning of a word. So instead of saying mm, uh, a name, a uh, man's name, Rui, we say Hui. So this, we associate the to letter to the letter R. So in English, when people say head, okay, because we have the sound head, but when they say the color red, when they visualize the R, because in Portuguese the R is mostly pronounced the same as the H. They say the same head, head, and they call it head instead of r red. So the, the H is not pronounced there. Now here we have the, the L, 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 and I brought the R, r because it's, it's similar, the, the position of the tongue is similar. R so we have late, no problem with late, but table, there's a problem there. Table, table, bowl, and red, red. In, in British English, that R is not pronounced. More. But in American English, it is. More. More. In British English, it is pronounced if the next word begins with a vowel sound. So, for example, I don't say more apples. I say more apples. In an American English, the R is... I'm, I'm not gonna risk here and say that it's pronounced a hundred percent of the time 
because I'm not an expert in American pronunciation. But what I've been hearing along my my years of uh, teaching experience is that the R is pronounced in American English. Okay, so red more. In here we have those semi-vowels because um, they they function as a consonant and they function as a vowel sound. For example, this word here, the first one, okay? Way, w, w, way. So it's very subtle. You don't say u, a, but it's w. So it's a semi vowel because it's not a strong sound. It's not, you know, it's not present there for a long time. Way, twist. The same happens here. Twist, twist. Don't say tu, is twist. So it's very, it's brief. Oh, and uh, I, I, I told you that I would bring the differences between this one and that one in British English. Uh, so talking about the word, want, want, and here this letter is a diphthong, l, won't. So listen. Want, won't. So if I want to say that I will not want, I will say I won't want it. I won't, will not, won't want it. In American English, I dare to say that this one is want and this is won't. I dare to say so. And the next sound which is the y, y, the semi-vowel. It's because very brief, yes. You don't say e, s, you say yes. So it's very e, yes. And here, many people have asked me, because you have the word, where's my mouse? Here. We have the, the word ear, ear, and then you have the y. Like yes, yes, year, year. So it's like year, year. Um, um, 2010 was a nice year. Um, the same as you. Many words starting with the Y, which is the year. Okay, so we've covered them all. Right? So, just to review, repeat after me. B, t, d, ch, j, k, g, f, z, Now here, I've brought to you the, the phonemic chart for you to have a look at it again. And uh, if you go to the British Council uh, website, it's www.teachingenglish.org.uk, you can find this phonemic chart, which I think is quite nice. Have a look at it. Let me show it to you. Here. Okay, I'm put myself up there. So that's the, the the British Council phonemic chart. You have here. Yeah. You click. Right. Yeah. 
and let's see the consonants. If you click here on this arrow, Let me turn the volume up a bit. Bad. They. They. Their. Their. Choice. Fish. Fish. Let me see this one here. Casual. Casual. Hmm. English. Okay, so it's quite nice for you to work with it. Thou. Boy. Joy. All right. So, it's this side there, okay? So, good. Mm -hmm. Down there. And, as a good teacher, I want you to practice, all right? So, we have this pronunciation practice. You're going to, to review most what we've seen in these three sessions. And you're going to use Kahoot, which is a very nice uh, app for you to use with your students. Yeah, so just go to kahoot.com it or dot it and then there they're gonna ask you for a game pen and our game pen is this one here zero two four three eight seven one zero two four three eight seven one so you key in that pen here you click enter and then you start playing, yeah. So there are many things. There are uh, there is a video, uh, which is quite nice, yeah. And then there are some questions. It's not very long, and it's going to be available up to April the nineteenth. And uh, then I'll I'll check and uh, uh, I will uh, publish the score. All right. So that was awesome. Thank you very much for uh, watching the three parts of the phonemic charts. Um, I guess now you can start reviewing, reviewing it by yourself and uh, being more familiarized with the phonemic charts. Okay, so done with part three, consonant sounds. All right, take care and... Have a wonderful time. Bye.